Pastor Benny Hinn is celebrating 40 years of ministry, taking the gospel to the nations of the world. Look to our precious Jesus today who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. Pastor Benny Hinn's visit to the nation of Brazil a number of weeks ago produced significant results for the gospel as capacity audiences in three cities experienced the life-changing Word of God, a great move of Jesus' healing power, and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. But soon after returning home, Pastor Benny faced an unprecedented challenge to his health. And on today's program, he talks about his experience for the first time on This Is Your Day, as he addressed the audience at a recent Monday night service in California. I want to kind of tell you what the Lord has done, if you don't mind, so then we, we can praise Him better, right? For three weeks, I was home uh, right after Brazil. I, uh, you, I, I know you won't, you won't believe this because you, you see how strong I am and energetic. I could not walk from here to the camera without losing breath. I could not shower. I could not shave. I could not even, even eating became a challenge. Brushing my teeth. I'm thinking, man, what's wrong with me? Because everything became hard. And I was, you know, fatigued very quickly. And I'm thinking, you know, what's, and I, you know, you think at first it's in your mind, but I could hardly walk and breathe properly. It was really scary. I'm sitting in the doctor's office. That's March 20th. And this is amazing. And I want to emphasize amazing Filipino doctor. He comes and grabs me by the hand and just won't let go and became tearful. You know, little tears began showing up. He said, it's very serious. He said, you, are, you're, you must go now to, to the hospital. He said, we're going to put you in ICU immediately. So I thought, oh my God, I'm dying. And, and he told me what was wrong with me. And he said, your heart rate is, do, is now, right now beating 200 per minute. And we got we to gotta control it. And he said, it looks like your heart is enlarged substantially, and we don't want you dying. He said, it's very dangerous right now. So I grabbed his hand, and I said, doctor, and I, I just met him, just, just met the guy. I said, doctor, don't let me die. And he, be, he, he began weeping. He said, I promise you, I will not let you die. Just pray for me. Just grabbed my heart. It was so moving. And I almost cried because I'm thinking, dear God, you know, this could be it, you know. They rushed me into emergency and suddenly these nurses running around all over the place. And this guy, this doctor, was just another amazing man who was in charge of the, of, of the, uh, of the you know, ER area. He came, began talking to me just to make me laugh and he was telling me jokes and and told me he knew who I was and such things. He, he just sent me a letter a few days ago. He said, I'm sending you this just to see how you're doing. He said, I'm, I'm not asking for anything except one thing. I wanted to make sure you're okay. Just amazing. The nurses were beyond belief. I mean, six days in ICU and uh, one extra day, I was in a normal room. And I, uh, I'm here to tell you... Um, I'll never see the world the same way again. I'll never see unbelievers the same way again. Because those guys saved my life. And I'll tell you, medical science is amazing. You know, Catherine Kuhlman used to always say, if God does not heal you, pray for the best doctor. And go and pray that God will use his hands. Well, that's what happened with me. Well, anyway, so I'm, I'm in the hospital on, on the 20th, and they started working real hard. And this guy <laughs> comes into ER. He's trying to make me laugh and all that. And it was so, so precious. And then they, they put me in and, and, and began working on first draining me. I did not realize my lungs were filling up with fluids. 
I didn't realize my organs <laughs> were shutting down. I didn't realize my heart was filling up with fluids. Because see, when your heart beats at 200 beats a minute, your body doesn't have the chance to have the right oxygen and so forth. Because, and they explained this to me, they said it's like running in a marathon and, you, and, you, and you're not stopping. You know, eventually you'll collapse. And the doctor said, he, he said, had you waited one more day, you would not be sitting here. I said, you mean I'd be dead? He said, well, I, I'm not going to say that. But, but he said, it would not have been good. So now they start working on me. They start draining me. They start giving me all the meds uh, real fast, in, in, still in ER. And uh, they put me in, 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 uh, in, the, in the room after about two hours. There I am in you know, ICU. That was a little hard because, you know, beep here, beep there. You can't really rest. Uh, they come in every few minutes and do this and do that. And, and they were taking my blood pressure every five minutes. <laughs> Literally. I mean, I had that thing around my arm. Well, anyway, so here I am. And, and then they put me in, in the room. And uh, the, the next day, these girls come in, these nurses. They were so cute. They said, listen, they said, we need to put this wire uh, up your arm down to the heart. So I was freaking out, you know. I said, no, no, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> they said, you're going to just feel a little pinch. And they, you see this long wire. They put it up my arm, down my chest, into my heart. I didn't even feel it. Nada, as they say in Spanish. And they began doing whatever they, are, they, they do through that. And it was really quite an amazing experience not to feel any discomfort or any pain. But then the next day, they began all the tests. They said, we have to eliminate what we, we think you don't have. And slowly they began to do all that. And they came first with bad news. They said, your heart is enlarged, a congestive heart failure. Uh, it's operating at 20%. I said, oh, Jesus. That's what they told me. They said, your heart at this point is only at 20%. They said, we, we have to do what we have to do. I said, look, do whatever you have to. So, but the medications they began to really give me were tremendous and, and helped me immensely. I'm still on them, thank God. But they, they went in the next day. I mean, I'm amazed, to be honest with you, at the new medical breakthroughs. They put that thing down here. It goes up your, your body into your heart. Yeah. And they looked in my heart and everything. They put a camera down my mouth to check for whatever, you know, especially, uh, you know, anything like uh, uh, um, blockage and such. Like, no, no, not blockage. What, what, what do you call the little? Huh? No, it's okay. It's okay. Blood clots. Blood clots. Because they were... They, they, they wanted to shock me, and before that, they wanted to make sure that a blood clot wasn't there that could be released. So they put all this stuff in me. They said, if there's blockage, we'll put those uh, you know, stints in there. We, they were all ready for it. I was freaking out a little bit because they asked my children to leave the room, and all the nurses came in to the ICU. That room was jam-packed with, with the nurses, all looking, and I'm thinking, man, I'm dying. <laughs> and they, they took, they unplugged whatever they unplugged, made, made my heart start running again. I was freaking out. And uh, dear Tianson grabbed my hand. He said, it's OK, it's OK. And then I, all I heard is, let's go. And then, bang, I'm gone. I was totally gone. And when they, when they woke me up, which was quite an amazing moment, <laughs> It was actually funny, but anyways. I woke up singing. <laughs> I was singing uh, Christian songs. I was praising the Lord. It was really awesome. My, my, my daughter and Michael were freaking out because they, they said, the Bible is coming out of you. You were praising the Lord as you came out of your... Uh. Well, anyway, so they, they came in. They said, listen, we have good news for you. They said, your heart has no plaque. 
And he said, it's, it's as clean, it's as clean as a 20-year-old. Must be doing something right. So I said, well, that's great news. But I said, it's still enlarged. They said, don't worry about it. You know, you, you're going to live. It'll be okay. And they began, of course, doing all the other things. It's been a, a, a remarkable journey. Uh, a lot to learn, of course. A lot to... Life itself has changed for me. And, and um, I want to live, uh, I wanna live a, a productive life now for the Lord. You know, when you come face to face with death, something happens to you. I don't care who you are. Something wakes up inside of you. I'm going to understand what I said. Because you realize, I don't have much time. You, you also realize how frail you are, how fragile life is. You also realize how much you need support. And uh, the support I received from preachers, especially preachers this time, was, really has been overwhelming. They, they all called. Everybody called. Even uh, uh, the guy from Singapore, uh, Joseph Prince, he called. Everybody called. He said, we're, we're praying for you. Please know we're praying. Jack Hayford told me yesterday on the phone, he said, he said, my wife wants you to know she loves you very, very, very much. I said, you know, Pastor Jack, it's so touching. He said, I, you know, he, he said, well, we've been wanting to come and see you. I said, well, thank you, but, you know, I'll come see you instead. But the thing is, uh, it's been so precious. Jan Crouch called. Uh, she, she kept calling every day. And finally she got through uh, talking to my daughter. And she said, Benny, I w I'm praying for you right now. She said, Let let's pray. And she began praying real strong on the phone. She said, that's exactly what, ha what happened to Paul. His heart went down like that. And it was operating at 10% in his case. But sadly, he was not able to recover. Uh, we all miss him very much now. But saints, life is beautiful. Enjoy it. Don't waste it. Don't mess up. Don't drink and don't smoke. I'm serious. If you smoke, stop it. If you drink, stop it. Do not abuse this beautiful gift God gave us. Your body is a gift from heaven. Are you listening? Yes. You, 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 you know, I came to talk to you tonight, just heart to heart. God has given you a precious gift. Life is a gift. Your body is a gift. Think about the amazing body you have. Amazing body that heals itself. Just give it what it, give your body what it needs. Just eat well, sleep well, rest well, and please go for a walk every day. Go look at the flowers. Go, go, go just enjoy the sunshine. Go look at people and, and, and enjoy the way they look, even if they don't smile. Everything is beautiful in this world. I've changed. Can you tell? Yeah. Bonky came to see me, and Bonky gave me a powerful word from God. I mean, he flew in all the way from Florida to tell me this. He said, I have a word for you. He said, the Lord told me to tell you, you're going through a storm. The leaves on your tree are falling, but the fruit is multiplying. And I said, I said, what do you, I said, what do you think it means? He said, I don't know. You should ask God. <laughs> he said, but the fruit is what's important. He said, the fruit remains, and the fruit will grow. And then he said, and remember, springtime is coming. He said, the, the leaves will fall on every tree. He said, we all lose leaves. The trees but he said, springtime is coming. He said, be ready. God is about to totally transform your ministry. He said, you're going to be, you're going to be ministering in a way you've never ministered before. And I want to say to Jesus, and only to Jesus, belongs the glory. You heard me. 
sharing today on the program with the people here in our studio. And I wanted to share that with you on what the Lord has done for me. It's been a miraculous time for me. Uh, at the end of January, I began feeling shortness of breath, not realizing my heart and my lungs were filling up with fluids. And uh, basically, I was on my way home, it looked like. But the Lord had different plans for me. Went into the hospital the end of February. They put me in ICU right away for six days. But I'm here to tell you I'm back to myself. In fact, I got a report this morning from my doctor, Tian Sang, who said my heart is back to normal and as strong, in fact, stronger than it was. So to Jesus be the praise, I'm having a very good day today. And uh, what you saw, I shared a few days ago, and now I even have an update. I want to pray with you that the Lord will touch your life. You know, Jesus came through for me in an amazing way. I see the world now in a different light. <clears throat> I see unbelievers in a different light because they were so kind when I was in the hospital. The doctors, the nurses, just amazing people, really. If God doesn't heal you through His divine power, pray that He will lead you to the best doctors and God will use them. Dr. Tian Sung held my hand when I got into the ICU, tears in his eyes. He said, I will not let you die. Just pray for me. That was a moment I'll never forget as long as I live because I had just asked him, please don't let me die because I was, I felt I was. My heart was working at 20%, actually 17%. It's now up to 45 as of this morning. And I thought, this is it. I could, I could not walk from my bed to brush my teeth. I could not walk from my bed. I was in bed for two weeks. I couldn't even get, get up and walk around with, without feeling this horrible feeling in my chest. So, you know, the Lord will do the same for you. And I, after 40 years of ministry, I'm seeing new things. I, I, like you heard today, I take walks and look at flowers and roses and plants I've never paid attention to before. The beauty God has given us in this world is amazing, really. So enjoy life. Life is short. Make the best of it. And like I said, if, if, if the Lord does not heal you, look, he's, he's our healer. We all know that, okay? He's our healer. His promises are yea and amen forever. But God may choose another way to touch your life. Be careful of, of doing things that can harm you, you know. I went to a holistic doctor who wasn't exactly very smart, I gotta tell you. He almost killed me. That was before I went to the hospital. So, well, maybe I need magnesium, potassium, let me go somewhere else. That was the wrong thing I did even though I've had doctors on my program who talk about nut nutrition that I still believe in. We cannot ignore conventional medicine. That's a big mistake many of us have made that can kill us and hurt us. Pray for the best doctor. God will lead you to that person as he did me. And he will, he will use that man's hands or woman's hands to change your life. The end of February is when it started with me. This is May. I can't believe what's happened the last few months. Let's pray. Let's pray that God will touch your life. Precious Jesus, I thank you for what you've done for me. And now I pray for my precious partner watching this program. Lord, I stretch my hands in faith. And I pray that let this be a miracle day for them. Let this be a miracle season for them. Let this sickness be canceled, Lord. Let this sickness, whatever it is, be gone. Let them live a a life full of joy and full of happiness and excitement. Let them see the future and with brand new eyes. Give him a long life. As you said, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Do it for every person in the name of Jesus. And God's people said, Amen. Don't miss the program tomorrow because I'm sharing this. This is different. It's from my heart to yours. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. My Jesse said, she, she, she said, Daddy, the most precious thing you did in that hospital is when you were walking around with your arms stretched out towards those in ICU.
praying for them. She said, you know that that girl you, you prayed over right next door to you had 10% 10, 10 chance to survive. Did you realize, Daddy, that they were coming with helicopters on the roof with these people who had just been in accidents on the road? She said, Daddy, you were walking around praying that God would heal those people. She said, you don't know how it touched us. You don't know how it touched the nurses. That's, that's why they, they were weeping when, when you came by and hugged them. They were cheering you when you left. She said, Daddy, don't stop doing that. Benny Hinn is coming to Boston. He invites you to join him to hear the life-changing Word of God, experience the presence of the Holy Spirit in worship, and witness Jesus' miraculous healing power. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus is good, and He's healed me. Your life will be impacted at the Chevalier Theater in Medford on Thursday, May 21st at 7 p.m. and Friday, May 22nd at 10 a.m. at 7 p.m. Call or go online for more information. He'll see you there. The greatest soil that you can sow into is the soil of a ministry that preaches the gospel around the world. A proven ministry of 40 years, of laying hands on the sick, of being continuously, of preaching the gospel, standing up steadfast in spite of everything, every whim. Pastor has stood, he's preached the gospel, and today the fervor, the anointing on him is as strong as it's ever been, and his burden for souls is as strong as it's ever been. So the soil of the Benny Hinn ministry is rich soil. I love Pastor Benny Hinn, and I love the Benny Hinn Ministries. I've traveled with Pastor now coming up seven years. And I can say this. There's no preacher alive today that has a greater burden for souls than Pastor Benny. God has anointed him for such a time as this. And the doors are opening up all over the world. The invitations are flooding in. But Pastor Benny cannot do it without the help of you and me and the partners around the world. I want to share with you a scripture, and then I'm going to ask you to sow a very special seed. Jeremiah 33 and verse 3 says this, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. I had never until today, while I'm in the studio taping these programs for Pastor Benny, never asked for a $333 seed. There's an anointing on the seed right now. Because three is the number of resurrection. Three is the number of trinity. And often God will speak a numerical number because there's power in numbers. In fact, God named an entire book the book of numbers. God's a numerical God. Order and numbers are important to God. You're important to God. You're important to Pastor Benny Hinn. We have a great and mighty work to do together as partners, reaping the harvest of souls. People who need to hear the gospel. I am told that there are almost one billion people who have never heard the message of Jesus Christ. Not that they had heard and rejected it, they've never heard it. We have a responsibility. And God has created a system called biblical economics, whereby we can walk in abundance we can walk in divine increase and prosperity. It's the message of seed time harvest. Genesis 8.22. As long as the earth remains, there will be seed time harvest. We've been taught this by Dr. Oral Roberts. But we've also been taught Galatians 6.7. God is not deceived or mocked. Whatever you sow, you will reap. I'm going to ask you today to sow this very special seed of $333. I'm not speaking to everybody, but often when you turn on the television and you see me, it's not coincidental. It's a divine appointment, and I'm anointed as a deliverer. And as you take this step of faith, I believe three things are going to happen. Number one, I believe that God is going to resurrect dormant seed. You have seed that you have not reaped, but this seed is going to be the catalyst to resurrect. You're going to reap more than what you sow today. Number two, you're in a battle. Somebody is in a battle, and God is going to give you the victory. He's going to silence an enemy. He's going to turn things around. And number three, God's going to give you unstoppable favor. It's like the Joseph anointing. You don't need everybody liking you. You just need the right person liking you. And in one day, in 24 hours, he went from the prison to the palace. Only the obedient 
gets an open hand from God. If you're willing and obedient, you will eat of the good of the land. Father, I pray now for the partners and friends of this ministry who are listening to my voice. And Lord, this seed is going to be a seed like they've never sown before. I decree and come into a covenant as you set aside and sanctified this covenant seed of $333 that the windows of heaven are going to open up on your life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. There's a number that they're placing on the screen. I want you to go to the phone. Go to the phone. Dial the number that you see on the screen. Don't hesitate. Don't wait an hour from now. Don't wait till tomorrow. Go to the phone and say, I'm one who's going to walk in supernatural favor and unstoppable favor. The battle's going to end in my life and God's going to be, give me the victory. And the seed that I've sown in the past that has not produced, the $333 seed is going to be the catalyst to change that season. Quickly, quickly go to the phone. Dial the number you see on the screen. Everyone who calls today and sows now, you're going to receive my brand new teaching, Understanding Biblical Economics. Pastor Benny wants to place this into the hands of every one of his partners because it will show you the balanced approach to having everything God said you could have biblically, His way, so that the gospel can be preached around the world. And on behalf of Pastor Benny Hinn, as you call, as you sow your seed, I want to say to you, thank you, thank you, thank you for making it possible so our pastor can preach the gospel around the world. And every soul that is saved because of your seed, it's going to be counted to your heavenly account. Keep calling, keep calling, and watch and see what God's going to do. Remember that your $333 gift today will help Pastor Benny Hinn take the gospel to the world. When you call to sow your seed, request Todd Kuntz's CD teaching on biblical economics, which will give you further insight into how your gift will activate three harvests in your life, the resurrection of your dormant seed, victory in your battles, and unstoppable favor. Call now. Persecution of Christians has reached historic levels, with millions worldwide living in fear and suffering for following Jesus Christ. Some estimates indicate that 350 million believers are facing torture, imprisonment, oppression, discrimination, and death. Horrifying statistics reveal that every five minutes, a Christian dies for his or her faith. Pastor Benny Hinn's heart has been broken as he's seen the news stories and heard reports from those who are enduring persecution. And he is asking you to join him now in fervent prayer for those who are facing unspeakable consequences as they stand strong for their beliefs. We must not forget them. Go to the ministry website at www.bennyhinn.org and sign up to join prayer warriors around the globe in praying for persecuted Christians. The prayer of agreement is a powerful spiritual force for effecting change in the natural world. So join this global initiative to intercede for persecuted Christians today.